Hey, hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another exciting episode on the channel. Hope you guys are doing well out there. And welcome to episode 9 of the Colin Messenger series. In today's video, we are going to finally be able to build out the first initial screen of our application. And what exactly am I talking about? Well, let me show you by using these two emulators over here. So the very first screen that we should be kind of shown whenever we open up the application is the latest messages for the current logged in user, right? So the finished application does exactly that. However, for the current application right over here, it doesn't really load any messages upon startup. So why don't we go ahead and fix that using Android Studio right now. Okay guys, and let's get the show on the road by heading back into Android Studio. And the first thing I would like to do is to run my application inside of the Pixel 2 emulator right over here. And immediately you can see that we get a blank white screen for the latest messages activity, right? And the first thing we would like to do is to slowly turn this page into the latest messages that you see on the screen. Uh, basically what you're seeing is a recycler view and inside of each one of these rows we have an image view and also a couple of text views on the right side. So this is what we are going to start off with building in today's video. And let me show you exactly how to do that by first going into the layout for our resources. And let's see, the latest messages activity is this layout file. Uh, the first thing I would like to add is a recycler view. So you can do that very easily by dragging in the recycler view like that. And there we go, we have our recycler view. You want to pin this to the top, uh, the left, let's see, the left like that, the bottom, and also the right like so. And uh, that's a pretty good start. I believe we might want to do this guy again and pin it to the left side. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, you might want to change the padding to 0, 0, 0, and 0 as well. And then finally, to make it fully span the left and right edges, you can change that to match constraint like that. And voila, there you go. Your recycler view kind of looks like that, right? Okay, so good stuff there. And I would like to give this an idea of, let's say, recycler view for the latest messages, like that. Hit the enter. And one thing that you might as well do while you're modifying the recycler view is to actually give this guy some kind of layout manager. So layout manager. Go ahead and use the linear layout manager like so. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, if you run your application again, you're not going to see any changes just yet because all you're adding is the recycler view. You don't have any rows in here. So the next thing we would like to do is to design these rows inside of our recycler view. And the way to do that is to create a new resource file. So new layout resource. And let's see, for this we want to call it, let's see, latest message and row like that. Okay, so what exactly goes inside of this row? Well, we have our image view on the left side. So why don't we start off with that? So drag that in there. And for the actual image, I really like using this star, so I'll use that again. And uh, what you'll see is this red arrow on the right side over here, and it's just complaining about some of the constraints. And so let me fix that, but uh, why don't I zoom in a little bit for you guys? And let's pin this guy to the left over here. Now, before I actually pin the top and the bottom, I would like to give the root element right over here an actual static height, so layout height. And let me use something large like 120 dp. And once you put that in there, you'll kind of see the bottom edge right over here. And now what I would like to do is to somehow center this image view inside of this entire row. And this is actually pretty easy to do if you just kind of constrain this to the top and also constrain this to the bottom like that. And it'll kind of magically center itself kind of vertically like so. And I would like to give this a little bit more padding. So why don't I modify this to be something larger like 24. And there we go. That's looking a lot closer to that over there. Uh, one thing that you might want to change is to give this a static width and a height. And let's use 64 dp. And uh, for the height, I'll use the same value, 64 dp. Okay, that's looking a lot better. And now what we're missing is the username text view and also this text view below it. So I'm going to drag this in here like so, and then drag the other one in here as well. 
So again, this is the username. The one on the bottom is the latest, let's see, message. Let's type that out correctly. And there you go. Uh, for this right here, I would like to pin it to the right of the actual image view. And why don't I give this a value of 16? That looks quite nice to me. And I'll do the same thing for the latest message. So let's change that to 16 as well. Now, something else that you want to do for the bottom text view is to bind it all the way to the right edge like that. And you might as well change the layout width to match constraint. That way it'll span the entire width correctly. Okay, you can actually do the same thing for this, but I think what we have right now is okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is to actually center these two views together in the vertical axes, right? If you look at these couple of views over here, the labels or the text views rather are actually centered a bit. And uh, the way to do that inside of Kotlin constraint layout is actually pretty easy. You just want to actually group your items together using a chain. So let me go back to the design mode. So hit that, hit the shift, and you can right click on this and say chain and apply some kind of vertical chain to these elements. And uh, once you do that, you have this chain icon that shows up. You can click on that once, it'll change the actual chain mode. Uh, the actual one that we want is the third one. So this is the chaining system. And once you have that, you can increase the actual separation space by going into this one or this one. Doesn't really matter, but just modify that to be something like eight and you'll get the center to be kind of perfectly spaced out like so. All right, so that's just a little bit of design that you have to get used to. And uh, now that we have this row inside of our resource files, we can go ahead and head into latest messages activity. And somehow we can start putting those rows inside of this recycler view that you can't really see right now. So the way I'm going to do that is to head on over to on create. And why don't we create some kind of method called setup dummy rows. And down here, we will say private function and setup dummy rows. And let's see, what exactly do we want to add inside of here? Well, I'm going to use the groupy adapter again. So let's use group adapter. And this guy, you just have to kind of remember how to construct it. You need to give it a generic type of view holder and just instantiate it like so. And then remember at the very end, you have to set up the recycler review latest messages adapter equals to the above groupy adapter right over there. And the last thing we have to do is to actually add some groups inside of this adapter. So let's say add a group. And uh, we need to add some kind of a row for our recycler review. Now this row, I'll help you create it right above. So I'll call this latest message. So latest message like that and row. And this guy, you have to subclass this thing called an item like that. And you'll just give it the, let's see, the generic uh, view holder and let's just create this class like so. Now, whenever you create one of these item rows subclasses, you have to override two methods. Uh, the first one is called get layout. This requires you to return the actual layout for your row, so our layout, and we're just going to use the latest message row we created right over here. So let's head back into the message activity. If you highlight this, it'll tell you to also override the bind function like that. And once you do that, your latest message row is no longer complaining about these methods. And uh, now that we have this class available, we can add it to the adapter. So add this row and I'll just create it like that. Let me just create two more. And uh, with that kind of in place, we can run our code and inside of your recycler review, hopefully you will be able to see three rows in it. And uh, that's pretty much exactly what you have. So you have your image view, your username, and your latest message text, very similar to this right there. And uh, if you want to apply some changes to the styling of your row, you can go in here and go into the username. And if you open up the text appearance like that, uh, you can make this bold, you can change the color by clicking here. Maybe you wanna make it fully black like that. And uh, that looks good. If you want to change the message font size to, let's say, 18, you can do that as well. And let me try to run this again in the Pixel 2. And here we go. It's going to look a little bit better. And voila. And so everything up to this point looks pretty good, right? 
our recycler view is loading our dummy rows. And what this means is that we're kind of ready to move on to loading some data from Firebase data regarding the latest messages for our currently logged in user. And the first thing we have to actually do is to somehow modify our database structure to capture the latest messages for our user. So let me show you exactly how that's going to work by kind of opening up this latest messages node. And this is something that we haven't created yet, but eventually we'll have this node right here. And for John Snow, which is XXJ, we're going to have another node underneath it. And this is going to correspond to the actual user that we're sending a message to. And this right here is just going to capture the latest message for that conversation log. All right, so for these two users right here, we're going to capture these two messages and it's kind of going to look like this at the very end. And it might be confusing right now, so I'll walk you through how to actually code this and how to listen for the messages right now. And so the way we're actually going to create this node structure is to first go back into the chat log activity over here. So chat log activity. And remember in the very last lesson, we started modifying the code inside of perform send message. And we're actually now sending two different types of messages for this reference and also this reference over here. So make sure you kind of remember what we did in the very last lesson, because right now I'm going to modify this a little more to include a third reference. So let's call this the latest message reference like that. And I'll set this equal to Firebase database. So database right over here. Let me get it to show up, get the singleton instance. And let me get a new reference. And it's going to start off at the latest, so latest messages. And that's the very root node. The next thing I'm going to add on to it is the from ID. And again, I'll add a to ID like so. All right, so this latest messages ref is going to help me keep track of the latest message between a current user, so the current logged in user. For example, I am John Snow, and the to user is going to be egret in this case. Okay, so what am I going to do with this latest message ref? Well, I'm going to set a value with it, and I'll set the value equal to the chat message above over here. And that's pretty much all we need for now. Let me run this inside of my Pixel 2 again, and you'll kind of see what this does after I kind of delete this latest messages node like so, and just kind of clear it to make sure everything is reset. And what I'll do now is I'll try to message Egret over here, and let's say, it's the John Snow messaging Egret, and uh, let's just hit the send, and you'll see the latest message now contains the actual node for John Snow. This is Egret right over here, and this is the actual message text that says John Snow. And if we say one, two, three, hit the send again, you'll see that the text message actually changes kind of immediately like so. And so that's pretty good. That's how we actually create this node over there. And so one last thing we actually need is the counterpart message for the other way around. And so what I mean is we want to go back into chat log activity over here and I'm going to create another reference. So let me just create that and pop that in there. I'm going to flip this to to ID and this guy, I'll flip it to the from ID like that. And I'll call this latest message to reference and we will just use the same actual set to value and use chat message again. And uh, we can run this again, so pixel two, and you'll kind of see a counterpart message being created right over here under latest messages. So let's just hit that hit on Egret and we'll say B B B B B hit the send. And now Egret also contains a latest message of B B B like so. And B B B also is under John Snow's latest message. All right. So that's kind of how everything works right now. And what I would like to do is to send another message just to make this example a little bit easier to follow. So let me go down to Jamie Lannister and Let's see, hello, Jamie from John Snow. We will hit the send and that message will show up under John Snow right here. Hello, Jamie from John Snow. And Jamie Lannister also has a note showing up right over there. Okay, so now the question is, what exactly do we do with all these nodes? 
Well, we can start listening for the latest messages by observing this node right there and observing all the children under that node. And I'll show you what that looks like by going back into the latest message activity. And so for the onCreate method, I am going to remove the dummy rows. And uh, what I'll do is I'll say listen for latest messages like that. And uh, let's just create another function. Let's create it right over here, private and a function and create latest uh, listen for latest messages and for this guy we will need to listen on some kind of reference right so that's a common pattern firebase database get instance you get the actual reference for the latest messages and latest messages and for this guy we want to actually use the from id for the current logged in user so you can always grab that from the firebase auth library so auth like that get the singleton and then access the uid on that object and so from id looks good over there and the last thing we need to do is to start listening to uh, events on the actual children of this node so we can say add a child event listener and you actually want to use this one because you're going to want to listen for new nodes that are appearing underneath this reference over here all right so for this guy, you want to say object and use child event listener and just say brace brace. And this guy is going to require you to override a lot of methods. And I guess namely five methods total. So on cancel, let me just get rid of the ones that I don't really want to use. So let me say removed as well, get rid of that. And for this guy, I want to say on child mood. And so these are the three methods that I don't really care about. Uh, all I'm concerned with is on child added and also on child changed. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to collapse these just to give myself a little bit more space to work with, delete that line. And what happens on the child added method is we're going to be notified every time we see a new child for the latest messages reference right over here so currently for Jon Snow who is XXJ we have two children so we'll be notified of these two elements inside of our tree and so the way to actually make it show up inside of this page over here is to simply first convert that snapshot that we're seeing into an actual message so chat message like that equals p0 dot get value and let's use chat message and actually use the class type so let me grab this guy and the class type like that and let me just remove that so here is the actual chat message from the p0 data shot uh, snapshot element and the last thing i would like to do is to somehow add it to the adapter for my recycler review right but uh as you can see we have our adapter over here we don't really have access to it and it's actually inside of a method that we haven't called yet. So instead, what I would like to do is to copy some of this code, but first I will cut this and I'll make it an instance property for my latest messages activity. And I will cut this and let me just go ahead and set it inside of the onCreate method right over there. Okay, so what that really means is if I run the code now, uh, I'm going to see nothing because I'm not really setting up any dummy rows. And so what I mean is we're really not calling these three add calls. So we're not seeing anything inside of our recycler view. Uh, the last thing we need to do is every time a child is being added, whenever we're listening for our latest messages, we just want to say adapter and add a group onto it like so. And we can say latest message row. So latest message row created like so and let me just run this code right now and you'll see uh, two rows inside of our recycler review and there we go we have our two rows and those two rows are pretty much representing these two items right here this item and also this item so why don't I actually go ahead and modify these rows to kind of reflect the actual text inside of these nodes and so let me show you how that's done by going into our activity class. And so let me modify the latest message row to actually take in a chat message. So value, 
Let's see, this guy will have a property called chat. So chat message, and we'll just end it off like that. And so for these rows, you can actually access the elements inside of it by using the view holder item view. And you can access the text view components somehow. And I think we can actually say user text view, or we can actually give it something else. So latest text right there, this is the text view two, and this is the actual latest message. Why don't I give this a text view? So I think I will say message, text view, and also latest message like that. Okay, let's just hit that to apply the refactor. For the username, we might as well say username text view, latest message, and we'll just click the checkbox, hit the yes, and for this guy, we will call it image view and latest message like that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and given all of these elements an ID. So let me go back into latest message activity. And in here, you can say text view. And you can access the message like that. And you can set the text on it to be something. Uh, we're just going to use chat message dot text like that and we should be okay. We're going to have a couple of errors over here and I'm no longer using that method. So I'll just comment all that code out and we'll have one final error for the latest message row. We need to pass in the chat message like so and uh, we can either unwrap it or use the Elvis operator like that. And one final thing we need to do is to just run this inside of our emulator and you'll slowly start to see the messages being reflected right over here. So BBB and hello Jamie from Jon Snow. So that's pretty much this message here and also this message down here. Hello Jamie from Jon Snow. So that's pretty much how we kind of monitor the latest messages inside of our application. However, one problem that we have right now is whenever we are changing these messages inside of the chat application, that actually isn't going to happen inside of this app right here. So for example, what I mean is if I add some change to this message, BBB and CCC, this doesn't really change. And that's really a problem because whenever someone else messages us, right, we want to see the change immediately inside of the screen. And so let me show you how to do that by kind of going into the on child change method. And so this is actually called every time you modify this over here. So for example, if someone else messages me, this is going to change. And uh, actually, let me show you what I mean by that by launching a second emulator. So let me run this inside of the Nexus 6 API emulator, which is this guy over here. And so you see the message right here, right? I'm actually logged in as Jamie Lannister, but I'll log out and I'll log in again. So Jamie Lannister at gmail.com and password and login like so. And what I would like to do is I want to message Jon Snow, which is this user over here. And I would expect for this message to change automatically, right? So if I click on here and I click on Jon Snow. And so here's a message from Jamie and hit the send. And that message actually shows up inside of uh, the Firebase console. So you'll see you'll see that this message actually changed right here, but it didn't really change over here, which is what we want to happen and what we expect to happen. And that's actually not happening because we don't really have any code inside of the child changed to monitor for that change. And so what you kind of need to do is you want to say child or val chat message, and we'll do the same thing as we did above, get value. Uh, get the actual chat message that we are monitoring for, apply the Elvis operator like that. And what you can try to do is to add onto the adapter like this. And we'll do the exact same thing. So chat message like that. And you should try to run this inside of your emulator and try, try to see exactly what's going on. And I'll show you what happens whenever I message Jon Snow again. So I'm going to drag my Nexus 6 back in here and you can say ABC at the send over here. And you'll see that every time we have a message change, right? So type in something else. You actually add on to this list instead of modifying the row that you should. So that's a kind of a problem that we have with our application right now. And the solution for this is a little bit hard to explain if you don't understand uh, hash maps uh, that well. 
So I just want to show you what that solution looks like and then we'll kind of discuss what the solution is actually doing. So the first thing I like to do is to create some kind of map for all my messages. So I'm going to call this guy messages map and uh, maybe I will say latest messages map latest messages map that way you guys can kind of get a better understanding as to what this guy is doing. Uh, this thing right here is going to be a hash map and we need to specify the key to be of type string. The values will be of type chat message and we'll construct it using these two parentheses like so. And what's going to happen for my latest messages map is every time I kind of monitor for a new message inside of Firebase, I'm going to add it into the map. So what I mean is I'm going to say uh, latest messages map, we're going to give it a key of some kind. I'm going to use the key that belongs onto the snapshot over here, so p0.key. And the key is actually the uh, recipient's user ID, I believe. So that might be a little confusing, but let me show you what the solution is right now, and then we'll talk about the solution a little more. Uh, the actual value is the chat message like that. And this should go away, but we need to force unwrap the key like that. And uh, now what we can do is, every time we add new messages inside of this map, we can actually apply some kind of refresh. So I'm going to say refresh recycler, recycler view, and uh, say messages like that. And so what's going to happen is, I'll create this function over here, recycle, refresh, or not just that, but a function and refresh recycler view with our messages. Maybe we want to make that private as well. And inside of here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say latest messages map, and we'll say values right here. This is going to grab all of the chat messages that I've monitored for so far. And you can apply a for each loop on this guy like that. And uh, what you can do is you can say adapter.add, and we'll say latest message row, and we'll say it like so. So it actually refers to one of the items inside of your loop. And that should be okay. Uh, one last thing you might want to do is you probably have to clear out everything inside of your adapter. So all the old messages will get cleared out and you'll add all the new messages one more time. Not the most efficient, but we'll just do that for now. And you might want to remove that row as well. So let me just pop that off. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this code and apply that on the on child change as well. And let me just run this inside of the pixel two. And you'll see that with this solution, what you're doing is for every message that you're listening to, you'll see these messages inside of the list because we're adding it on the on child added uh, listener. And the next thing that we want to check for is whenever we modify these messages over here, so let me see what I can do inside of Firebase directly. And so this is the message that belongs to Jamie Lannister over here, right? So if I modify this to be something else, so hi, I have no arm, hit the enter, and you'll see that this message just changes automatically whenever these fields inside of Firebase changes. And so if you wanna see that in action by actually modifying the messages inside of your app, you can just click on new message. And this is Jamie Lannister and I'll message Jon Snow. And let's say, hey, 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 hit the send. And that message automatically changes like that. Alrighty, so now that all of our messages are showing up correctly inside of the emulator right here, you might be asking yourself, how exactly does this hash map work? And how does it load our messages correctly inside of our recycler view? Well, let me kind of quickly go over a short explanation. And basically there's kind of two scenarios that can happen here. If a new user messages us, we are pretty much notified by it through this method of on child added. And basically we convert the snapshot here to a chat message and then we put it into our hash map and then we reload everything inside of our recycler view by first clearing out all of the messages and then we just add it back in by using all of the values inside of our hash map. That's essentially what's going on. And then there's another scenario where if a user kind of messages us again with a new message, we are notified of that change and then we kind of apply the same logic. We get the message by using the conversion of the snapshot over here. 
and then we put it back inside of our map and then we refresh our recycler view again. And uh, the most important thing to kind of understand here is what exactly is this key value for p0.key? Well, the key actually belongs to the user that is messaging us or the user that we're messaging. And basically the key in our case is this over here. So this is the key of the user that we're messaging. So 2ID belongs to this egret or Jamie Lannister and this P1V value is the other user. So basically what's happening is our hash map up here, the latest messages hash map, it's constantly being refreshed through these two messages or through these two listeners. And then upon the refresh, we clear out everything and then we reload all of our messages inside of the recycler view. And I believe that's gonna be it for today's video. Now there's quite a bit of work left for us to do. For example, we need to load the images inside of the profile on the left side. And we also have to fill out the username in the bold over here. We also have to implement the ability to click into one of these rows and load the chat log activity kind of like this over here. So hopefully you're looking forward to that episode in the very next video. Keep on coding guys and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.